Okay, uh, we might get started. Hello, my name is Dr. Stephen Kidd and I'm the coordinator for the Faculty of Sciences internship program. Um, so this is an information session on internships uh, and what they involve for 2020, for the summer of 2020 and for 2021. Uh, okay, excellent. Nothing's moving. What's happened here? Wow, this is good. Okay, uh, so what I plan to do through this session is to give you an overview of what exactly we mean when we're talking about internships in the Faculty of Sciences. So what, what are or what is the Sciences Internships Program, uh, why you should choose to do it um, and how it works. And, Importantly, <clears throat> this is uh, for the limited scope of projects that we have for summer, but there are projects available for the summer. Um, but also really importantly for semester one 2021, there's going to be a lot of opportunities for internships and work placements. Uh, so what does this in exactly involve and how do you get involved in this? Okay. Uh, so, you know, there's nuances around what we mean when we talk about an internship uh, for sciences as opposed to something that you might do if you're a vet or if you're a nurse or an accountant. Okay, So <clears throat> I'm going to go through some details exactly why uh, we have an internship for science students and what this exactly means. Um, for the Faculty of Sciences, uh, about 18 months ago we established a course, or oh, well, we actually established two courses. So. Uh, there's a second year course, Science 2700, and a third year course, 3700. And these are three unit courses you can obviously take as a second year or third year course. And the workload is equivalent to a normal um, three unit course. Uh, there's work that's involved, but there's also time that you spend within a host uh, organisation. I've actually very specifically put there an external host organisation. So, you know, what we try to uh, establish for you are projects that are outside the university. They're not research projects within labs at the university. Um, they're something that you'll do with an external host organisation. But on top of that experience that you get, uh, there's also learning activities. So there's a course. Uh, uh, there's a framework that goes around the uh, work time that you spend with an external host, there's learning activities, there's assessment tasks, and there's also obviously the internship itself. So those things set up uh, the course. Okay, so why do a internship? And you know, I think this is open to first, second, and third year students, so if you just bear with me, put your hand up if you're a first year student. Excellent, that's wonderful. Uh, so, uh, as a first year student, there's all sorts of reasons why uh, you leave school and choose to come to a university to do a science degree. Uh, some students will have a very clear idea of what they're interested in. Uh, some students uh, do science because they're just interested in science. And during that process um, of your science, hopefully during your first year and then in your second year, uh, sorry, my, uh, my, my laser pointer seems to run out of. This is by doing all my lectures by Zoom. I haven't needed to use it for a while. I should have changed the batteries this morning. I apologise for that. I'll try and use the mouse here. But, you know, whoops. Oh, now, now we're all going. God, this isn't working, is it? There we go. Um, so during your first year, you'll, you'll come in contact with a lot of concepts and ideas around science that you may not have previously known. You, you may have come to university with a really clear idea what you, what you wanted out of your science degree and um, who you wanted to be at the end as a young professional or a scientist. And you know that idea might change. You might have come with no idea of uh, what you wanted from your science degree. Um, uh, and hopefully during the process of first year and second year, uh, you start to, to get, it starts to crystallise in your mind what it is about science that you really love. And hopefully by third year, uh, what, what we've done is we've built a huge amount of discipline knowledge. You're starting to do your majors and you're really excited. Uh, and you'll come out um, as a graduate with a really deep um, understanding 
of the science around a specific discipline and you'll have a major uh, and quite a lot of students end up with a double major uh, and that's great and as you can see uh, that girl there she's done a double major so she's got two things and she's running around she's got a big smile on her face um, uh, so that's great and when you finish uh, there's no other way that you would get more knowledge than your degree yeah so we will provide you with all the scientific knowledge around the majors and prepare you uh, to be a research scientist, a scientist in industry, or a scientist as a young professional working somewhere. Yep, the, you're not going to get more um, knowledge around the science or the discipline uh, than from what we provide for you in, in the activities, the learning activities uh, in the courses that you do in your program. Okay? So, What's really important is that, that girl with her major, who's now graduated, she's going to need a whole lot of graduate skills. And there's clearly the discipline knowledge, you know, if she's done chemistry, um, it's all that chemistry that she now understands that she can take that with her. Um, and that's, that's wonderful. But along the way, uh, as a graduate, um, she will need other skills, okay? Um, and that, that might be analytical skills, it's problem solving, it's being able to report her findings either orally or in a written context, it's working within a group, and it's time management. So she needs these other skills or personal attributes. Uh, and you know, the really interesting thing is you do get those through the learning activities that we provide in our courses and our programs. Um, you know, uh, you, through your pracs, your chutes, and other uh, learning and assessment tasks that we give you, we, aiming, we are aiming to provide these other skills and attributes um, as a, so that you come out with those as part of the graduate skills. But also as a young professional, uh, either specifically as a scientist or otherwise, um, there are other things that you will need, other at personal attributes that go beyond simply knowledge uh, that we're providing here at the university. Uh, and these are things that um, sometimes are referred to as soft skills or transferable skills. Um, and these are increasingly important uh, for working in a dynamic and flexible um, environment. These are things such as interpersonal skills. Uh, people often talk about emotional intelligence, so social and personal awareness, adaptability. Uh, I think 2020, if I'm, if I'm right, correct me if I'm wrong, has been quite a dynamic workplace for many places um, and required their workforce to be able to change and work in different environments and um, with different people. Uh, as part of these attributes as a young professional, you need resilience, uh, you need to manage and work with people at the same level as you, but also uh, work with people higher up with leadership groups. And you also need to work across disciplines and form networks, okay? And I've put here that as a young professional, and this is, you know, whether you're working specifically as a scientist, this is regardless of what you do as a graduate, uh, you'll need these skills that go beyond knowledge, okay? Uh, and, you know, this is a, a table that was presented at the, work, uh, at the World Economic Forum, um, comparing what employers were asking from um, their new employees uh, from 2015 to 2020. And I'm not going to go through all these, although there's a lot to discuss in this, but you know, there's some things there. These are the lists of their top 10. Uh, there's some things there that are consistent and they're always going to be there. And then there are some things that have been introduced in 2020 and beyond. And you know, I should point out that this was put, this was in 2019. Uh, so this was before COVID and all sorts of other things that have uh, uh, hit workplaces globally. But you know, there are things there that people need. Something, you know, point six there, emotional intelligence is something that is increasingly important. And as a new graduate, as a young professional, uh, whether you're working specifically as a scientist, a research scientist, a scientist in industry or for government, or if you're working in and around science, the discipline knowledge that you want will still be very important, but that portion of your job uh, is probably becoming less and less. Um, you know, it's, 
It used to be maybe when I was about your age, you know, 80% of what uh, a new graduate would be doing would be just doing what they learnt in their third year. Uh, uh, the science is developing so quickly that in third year, the discipline knowledge that we give you um, is, is going to be advanced in two or three years' time. Okay? So employers now are looking for more skills or attributes in their new employees to ensure that they're able to cope with a dynamic and changing uh, field of science or uh, their ability to work with other disciplines as well. So all these things are really, really important. So the ones that I've ticked there are critical thinking, emotional intelligence, and the really important one that I've kind of touched on in the last 38 seconds is cognitive flexibility. Okay, so once again, let me highlight that you know the attributes that you really need are around analytical skills, problem solving, group work and time management. We can do that and we try and do that as much as possible with some of the things that we introduce in our programs and courses. Uh, we can do that here at the university uh, through learning. Yeah? And that you know, can be all sorts of things that you do within your courses in prax and shoots and otherwise, uh, but also through career services and indeed within our science uh, courses, the internships courses, we can give you modules and tasks to do that help you build up your personal and professional profile, uh, that teach you how to best put together a CV or a resume. Uh, so we can do all that here. One thing that we can't do is give you the experience in a workplace. You know, when you're challenged with uh, working with difficult managers or uh, new tasks that you don't know how to deal with and, and new people as well. Okay, so. So there's two things that are really important here. There's the learning, and then there's your, the actual experience and how you reflect on that experience. Uh, and that's actually really essential to our science internships program. It's not, and I, I, hopefully I can say this um, as many times as possible, it's not the discipline knowledge. Uh, you're not gonna get any new discipline knowledge or uh, information about your major uh, and the scientific knowledge uh, by going out into a workplace. Uh, we can do all that here, but it's the experience of working in a workplace with other people, with managers, with teams, managing time and reporting and all those sorts of things. So it's those transferable skills that are central uh, to the Sciences Internships Program. Okay? Uh, so because of that, the, the projects that we, we find, some of them are discipline specific, but some of them are quite broad. Um, and they're in and around science. They might be in science communication, science policy. They might be in intellectual property and, and researching uh, uh, new discoveries uh, or patents and things like this. Um, and once again, some of them are very specific in terms of their discipline. So the workplace experiences is in industry, business, or government bodies. Uh, it's in science. Some of them are discipline specific, but they're in and around science, and, and I want to emphasize that. So what exactly are they? I've just mentioned all that. Um, they're not a job placement. It's not accreditation. In and around the university, the term internship means different things. You know, if I'm in accounting, I want to do an internship so I get my foot in the door, and they get to know me, and they'll employ me. Uh, if I'm up at the vet school, I need to do a certain number of hours of delivering calves or whatever they do up there, um, you know, to get my accreditation. Okay, so th those are different aspects of work placements or internships. You know, what we're looking for um, is to provide you guys with experience uh, in a workplace, in industry, like I say, so that you can build on, you can have an experience that helps build on those transferable skills and you can reflect back on those and see how that's changed your perspective of, of workplaces and, and working, and indeed whether going and working in industry, government, or in a hospital or something like that is what you want to do, or maybe it might make you think, oh, look, um, I'm, my personal attributes are more geared towards focusing on a research project and I might continue down that path. Okay, so the eligibility um, is for Faculty of Science students, they're for all students, so Bachelor of Science or Bachelor of Science name degree students. Um, 
What we've said is that you need to have completed 36 units of credit, so this is students who are about halfway through their second year or third year students, and we've put a cutoff as a GPA of 4.2, uh, but we're all really kind and generous people, and if you don't fit into this for whatever reason in terms of your timing or, or other things, um, we, we do have some flexibility, so you can see me as the course coordinator and we can talk about your study plan and what best would work for you. Okay, so what does it involve? I, I've mentioned this previously. It's equivalent to a third year, a three unit course, not third year, a three unit course. So it's approximately 120 hours within a host company, which is about two days per week for 10 weeks. Okay, and this I'll emphasize again is arranged and negotiated directly with a mentor that you have within the host company. You know, uh, industry, government and, and companies don't work by semester base uh, systems, you know, so sometimes we need to negotiate with them the times that best suit them and you. Uh, the internship program is open and is offered for semester one, semester two, but also through winter and summer. So we can kind of be very flexible with when you do the actual uh, internship and, and when that sits within your program as well. Um, the placement is not lab-based. Um, it's, it's not meant to be a research placement. Um, it's in and around science. Some of them are discipline specific, but it's, an, it's meant to be an actual job as a young professional or a graduate. Once again, this is in business, communication, um, and engagement. So there's meetings, there's reports. Uh, there's some of the projects, uh, some of the placements are actually projects. So you'll be working within teams for a specific achievement, you know, an outcome. Um, and some, uh, uh, something that you're given on your own to do. <clears throat> um, yep, so that's, that's really, really good. So there's a process for this. So how does this work? How do you, if you're interested, uh, how do you go about uh, getting into science internships? Um, there's an information session, which is just now. This will be recorded. Uh, if you have further questions after this, you can directly uh, communicate with me and I, I will answer your questions. So my name's do obviously Dr. Stephen Kidd. Um, but how do you find a place? And really importantly, we, we're, we've got some super help in how we engage and build up these projects and scopes um, by Ross Forbes, who sits uh, centrally at the university. And I might just ask Ross to introduce himself uh, and give a couple of minutes overview on the process of applying for a placement. Thanks, Stephen. There you go. Thanks, Stephen. And, and can I firstly say uh, uh, congratulations to each of you simply for being here, for recognising this as an opportunity that's worthy of consideration. And it, and it probably does reflect, you know, thinking outside the square a little bit from your mainstream topics and things. So, you know, well done for recognising that and hopefully we can provide you with some opportunities that are, that are worth pursuing. Yeah, so, look, my role in the university is as an internships coordinator. Um, I've got a particular focus on supporting the Faculty of Sciences, which hasn't really got quite the tradition of internships that perhaps other areas of the university have got. So um, the, the basic process is um, there, are, there are two ways of achieving an internship through our processes at the moment. Um, the general scheme is that I'm always out there talking to industry and government um, about opportunities that might, might exist. I'm promoting this scheme um, out in the, the real world and looking for opportunities where Hosts are willing to consider taking a student um, for this period of a 20-day placement or about the equivalent of a 20-day placement. We get um, some really enthusiastic hosts um, and certainly we get some repeat offenders as well who have taken the opportunity to, to trial this as a, a sort of one-off and have found it so successful and so helpful to their organisation um, that they want to come back and have more and more. So we've got a range of hosts, um, some new, uh, some who um, have had internships previously. 
Um, when I'm talking to a host in that way, um, I then ask them to um, define a project that would suit a 20-day placement. Um, and, and we get a project outline, or a scope as we call it, um, defined. Um, Stephen takes responsibility for reviewing that from an academic point of view to determine if it meets the learning objectives, uh, and most often they do. If they don't, we go back and talk to the host about just massaging that and tweaking it um, so that it's a project that will serve both the needs of the host, but also the university and you as a student who's trying to take on this task. So most of our opportunities are developed in that way. And again, once I've got an opportunity like that, I will now post that through Career Hub. And I'm, I'm guessing most of you, if not all of you, are quite familiar with Career Hub. Um, let us know if that's not the case, because we sort of consider that that's probably the standard that you are aware of that. Um, I'll post this as, as almost a little job advertisement, but um, labelled as an internship. Um, Career Hub accommodates a whole range of opportunities and I'm sure it's a bit overwhelming when you go in there and look at those, but if you search under opportunities, I'll try and regularly use a standard naming format for those opportunities that I'm involved with. They will be titled Sciences Internships, followed by host organisation name and project title. Um, so, for example, just yesterday I posted one. So this is a real live opportunity that any of you could apply for now. And it's labelled Sciences Internship, City of Holdfast Bay, Holdfast Bay Environment Assistant. Um, that posting will be up only till the 4th of November. So it's open for about a week and a half. Um, your responsibility is to keep checking Career Hub regularly. Uh, we don't post these all on the one day. As soon as I've got one available and, and ready to go, I'll post it up on Career Hub. So it's on a rolling basis you'll see these opportunities. Limited time, these hosts want to know, you know what student interest there is. They want to get on with recruiting and choosing, selecting the appropriate student. So adver advertise through Career Hub, keep an eye out for them labelled as science internships. Um, as I said, on a rolling basis. The, the other way you can achieve uh, uh, and organise a placement is what we refer to as self-sourced. If you happen to be firstly confident enough to approach um, an industry or government organisation, um, have contacts in there, uh, have some discussions with them to say, you know, I'm a undergraduate science student at the University of Adelaide, would you be willing to provide an opportunity for me to do an internship with you? We have some students who, who are confident enough to do that, have contacts already or are willing to make a few cold contacts. If you come to me and say, here's this organisation that seems very open to an inter internship for me, um, then I can follow that up and speak to those contacts and, and progress that on your behalf. There is some advantage to that, albeit you've done some of the, the hard yards um, initially, so it saves me a little bit of time. But um, more importantly, you're not then going to compete for that opportunity. Um, if, if you arrange a self-sourced um, internship opportunity and it meets our academic requirements, and the host um, is appropriate. We do some, some checks. We've got some due diligence checks that we need to do. We're not going to send you, you know, to a remote place where there's no uh, satisfactory supervision or anything. But if we're confident that it meets our needs, then we'll just set that up on your behalf and you can go straight into that internship uh, rather than those that are advertised through Career Hub, you will be competing with with your peers who also apply for that opportunity. So two, two ways into the scheme. Um, look at the advertisements that we will put up through Career Hub on a rolling basis. The application process is quite simple. It requires a cover letter specific to that position. Please don't use a, a, a common you know, cover letter template. Um, make sure you refer to the particular opportunity that you're applying for. Um, a brief resume, um, and there's just a couple of little 
um, video questions that you need to respond to. Uh, so on the basis of that, um, we'll assess those applications, we'll shortlist, we'll provide the host with a shortlist, and they'll probably then contact you for usually a reasonably informal um, talk over the phone, Zoom meeting, maybe uh, catch up over coffee, um, and they'll, they'll then select their final candidate uh, for that opportunity. So that's my role. Um, keep an eye on Career Hub is, is the real take home message uh, and uh, look for opportunities that you're interested in. You, you are eligible to apply for more than one position if you want to. Um, please be aware we expect you to be reasonably responsible about that. If, if you apply for several um, and we shortlist you for one and the host offers that to you, we would expect that you are serious enough and genuine enough to want to take that. Forget about the other ones you've applied for, even if one of those was perhaps a favourite. Uh, we would expect you to just move ahead and, and take the first one that's offered to you. Um, otherwise, the process gets really difficult to manage across uh, you know, many, many students. That's probably all I need to offer at the moment. So please feel free to contact me at any time um, through internships in the university. Um, on Career Hub. Thanks, Stephen. Excellent. That was, that, was, that was brilliant. Thank you very much, Ross. That covered <coughs> everything, hopefully, and there'll be time at the end if uh, um, people have specific questions about the process, but I think that covered everything uh, that we needed to cover there. The, the last thing I wanted to touch on was the assessment. So I, I mentioned that um, the internships sits within a course, uh, they're learning activities and clearly there's assessment as well. So quite often students are really interested in assessment, I find, in the last few years. Uh, so I'm just going to take you through the assessment and, and why we've set up these particular assessments. With, with any experience, uh, whether that's an internship or a prac or anything that you do, the value that you really get out of it isn't just to pass through that experience but to reflect on it to think back as to the elements of that experience that have had an impact on you personally. So uh, just really briefly before I get into the uh, assessments, that's what we want you to do. We want you to think about uh, who you think you are at the moment, um, who you want to be as a graduate. Uh, so there's, a, there's kind of a reflection before the internship. Uh, there's thinking about what you're doing during the internship, both the activities that you do, the, you know, physically what you are actually doing, but also reflecting on the transferable skills, those other things that you're, you're being challenged by, by being in a workplace, so you keep a little diary. And then at the end, you do a report where you look back on who you were uh, before the internship, the activities that you did during the internship and, and what you've learned during that internship and how that's impacted on you personally and your personal and professional attributes and, and what that might mean in terms of how you now see yourself as a graduate. So that's a final report. So that was, that was my overview of the assessment. The assessment also includes a, a fourth item. There's pre-internship, internship diary and a report, but also the host's give us um, a, a little bit of an assessment of you as well. Okay, so in, in detail, so what we've got is task one, which is uh, working through some modules um, which are on the My Uni course. Uh, one thing I wanted to, and that reminds me, so we go through the process uh, of identifying a project, interviewing with a host, and being ac accepted um, for a workplace uh, to do internships, and that all happens through, uh, through Ross and myself talking and that um, you're looking on Career Hub, you don't get enrolled in the course until you've been accepted um, by your host and you don't enrol in the course, the Faculty of Sciences enrols you. I'll, I'll just make that point. But once you're enrolled, uh, you'll clearly be able to see the My Uni course uh, on Canvas and there are modules that are there uh, and you work through those. Um, there's, uh, they're on, in, professionalism, uh, on building your personal and professional profile, you know, CV and things like that, um, and employability. And then after that, you put together a little document, um, and that document uh, forms your task one. 
Now, that should be submitted before you start your internship. Um, you know, as Ross indicated, these, uh, these internship opportunities uh, are when a host comes to us with, with a project uh, and they're on a rolling basis. So, you know, an internship doesn't start week one, term one, or semester one, and finish in week 10, you know, ready for week 12, and all, it doesn't work like that. So, so there's not a due date per se. Um, you know, some students might start, you know, in week four or five. Some students might start before semester because that's when the project opened up, okay? So hopefully um, your project starts, you get enrolled, uh, you get signed up and you get enrolled, you see the My Uni course, you do the modules and then you start your um, internship and you submit your task before um, you actually start your workplace. Uh, during your... Um, during your work placement, uh, you can do some diary entries and that forms task two. You know, this is in two parts, as I've suggested, talking about the activities that you're doing, um, uh, the challenges, uh, the things that you're learning, but also identifying the transferable skills that you are building uh, during those activities. So, you know, probably once a week, um, uh, you'll do a diary entry. Now, I say probably once a week, you know, as students and academics, we're used to things being really structured. Uh, some of these internships will be really compressed. You know, it might be over the mid-semester break, you do you know, full time. So, they'll be all, so it won't be once a week in that case, it might be every few days. And you can talk to me about how best to do that. Okay? So uh, as you can hear, uh, there's a lot of flexibility on how we're designing the course and the activities that you're doing. Uh, this gets submitted as a single document of, you know, of all your diary entries on completion of your work placement. Whoop. Uh, and then the third task is like a reflective journal or a report. Okay? And like I suggested um, a little while ago, a minute or so ago, this is sort of looking back at what you did um, during um, your internship and putting that together in a report. But really importantly, you know, reflective journals are sort of looking at before you did the, your, that specific experience, you know, who, who were you, what were your per personal and professional attributes, uh, what did you think about your, yourself uh, as a graduate and your career, you know, going forward two or five years' time. Um, that's what you were before the experience and the things that happened on the experience, how they've impacted on you personally. The My Uni course has information on reflective writing, uh, which is really, really valuable. Uh, not just for this course, I might add, but it is really valuable. Okay, so uh, I think I've said all the things here. Uh, the reflective journal uh, is identifying the activities, how they've impacted on you, the things that you've learnt, the skills that you've developed, then looking back and how you consider your, your career pathway now, having had an internship. Um, it's a reflection on the process, the whole process. And this is, I've given plenty of time, it's four weeks after completion of your internship. It's about 1,500 to 2,000 words is, is what we're looking for there. Okay, so that's the assessment. And I think that's everything. I was going to open up the rest of the time to questions, if, if people had questions either for me or for Ross. Yes? Uh, okay, so um, if you so if you're doing um, and it depends. Uh, so if you're doing a major, that's 12 units at level three. If you're doing a double major, that's another 12 units. So that fills fills up your study plan. And we can talk personally. You know, I don't want to talk about everyone's individual study plans. In, in, you know, and this is being recorded, so yeah, probably not best. Yeah, but so that you know, in third year, that doesn't leave you any space. So double major, 12 plus 12 is 24. That's a year. Okay, so um, the, w there are other options. Um, you know, we could look back at your second year and you can shuffle around things that are already there. Or um, you can do an internship that doesn't sit within the course. Uh, there are um, opportunities that pop up now and again. They're not, they're not through this pathway. They're not for credit. Um, 
but you know th there might be opportunities and they would be out of semester so it will yeah but there are things and we can talk about that um, if you want to did you want to add something to that Ross no, no? okay it is it is a little bit unfortunate um, so uh, in chemistry uh, a lot of third year courses uh, have identified that you know six units is, is a lot, um, but if, you, if you're keen on a double major, then that kind of blocks out the third year. Yep, that's true. Any other questions? It's all very clear? Yes? What's the difference between doing it in second and third year? So it just, it's just where the course sits in adding to your study plan, your transcript. Yep. Yeah, so we can, yep. So the, the courses themselves are exactly the same. Uh, indeed, we, we have had, and it's, it's not ideal, we have had students, or yeah, a couple of students who've done it in second year and wanted to do another one. So we've kind of changed the third year course in, in those situations, but ultimately the second year and third year course uh, are, are exactly the same. Those courses are the same. Yes? Are there any other questions? Yes? Uh, for, for your course. Now, there's a couple of things in what you said there. So um, what you do is you look on Career Hub and there's a description um, there. Now, it might be with, let's, let's pick out a company. Uh, there might be an internship available with um, Adelaide Brighton for an analytical chemist. And a lot of it's going to be doing analytic. You doing chemistry? I'm studying So you're not doing chemistry. So you think, hmm, probably not best for me, that one. Okay, then there might be one that's on science, you know, it might be with Adelaide Enterprise on communication or looking at patents, and that would be for anyone, okay? So that's a discipline non-specific sort of thing. So there will be discipline-specific internships, not, you know, not many. Um, and once again, I'll emphasize, I, I think I've probably said it 104 times, uh, but for, again, you know, the idea isn't to go into, don't, don't look and say, oh, I'm doing biomedical science, I'm really interested in microbiology, which is great, um, but um, I, wasn't gonna, I wasn't gonna stop, yeah, I was gonna stop myself. Um, but don't just look for microbiology ones or biomedical science, you, you'll see that a lot of internships are very, very broad, um, yeah. So you look broadly um, and you'll see internships, they'll be, they'll be, the projects will be described in detail um, and if you've got questions about them, you know, it's probably best to, you can contact Ross. Uh, he can talk about other things around that description, you know, but the exact um, project and what you will be needed to do in that workplace will, will be itemised in, in detail in the project. And you think, yeah, that, that suits what I'm looking for, yeah? I'm really interested in science communication. You know, they're talking about doing this, this and this and setting up this. Yeah, that sounds really interesting, yep. Is this going to work? Yeah, yeah. Can you hear me now? Okay. Oh, just, just hold, hold, hold. Perhaps hold. Sorry. Um, I just wanted to make the comment um, COVID has affected um, the, the response from some of our hosts. Early in the year, we had many hosts lined up for internships who came to us and said, you know, we're really sorry, we, we just can't accommodate this now in our workplace. Most of their workforce were heading out to work from home, things like that. So uh, the reality is COVID has impacted on some of uh, the opportunities we expected to have and, and still probably is having a bit of an effect. Um, so it will become competitive if you're interested in following up an internship in the very near future. Don't be discouraged if you're not successful with the first one you apply for. That's the reality of, of life and it's like applying for jobs and things. Um, it, it, it doesn't mean you know, you're worthless and not to be considered. It just means you, you weren't selected for that particular one. So please don't be discouraged. We may have limited numbers of opportunities in this summer semester, semester one round. You know, consider semester two as well. Look further out. Um, things will change. Things will improve and we're hoping they'll improve quite quickly. Uh, but yeah, I just wanted to mention, you know, don't be discouraged if, if the first one you apply for 
you're not successful with. There's a number of other people chasing them now, so uh, uh, just stick at it. Talk to us. Uh, we're happy to offer advice about how you might improve your application. Um, career services are very, very helpful with advice about developing resumes, you know, interview techniques, things like that. Take advantage of all of those opportunities because all of this is building on trying to increase your employability at the end of your undergraduate studies. Now, whether you choose to take a research path and honours and PhDs or things or try and jump into the workforce, your employability is what we're really trying to focus on in, in much of this program. So uh, good luck with that. Talk to us any time, please. Uh, that's a really interesting question. Um, uh, we, I, I think we wanted to keep those separate. I remember that. So that's yeah. um, managed by Sharon, Sharon Scott. Uh, and I think early discussions, uh, and the, the, the simple answer is no. Okay. Yep. So um, if you're doing it and you're getting credit, if you're doing it as a course and you're getting credit, it's not going to go to your Adelaide Graduate Award. If I could just, is that, is that right? Yeah. If I could just add to something that uh, Ross touched on there, you know, one of the stunning things, experiences that I've had is how, st how students get into a workplace and, and really sort of change their perspective. You know, we had one student, I, I remember Jack, uh, last year, 2019, uh, he, he, he was a microbiologist, as, as most kind of you know, intelligent, sensible people. Oh, I'm so sorry. Um, he, you know, and he wanted something that was really discipline specific. And we had something in science communication. It was with uh, Animate Your Science. They're a local company that does spectacular things around animation and putting out stories for science communication. Uh, and, he, and he came and saw me, actually. Um, and he said, I don't want to do this. This, isn't, this sounds really dull. You know, I, I want to do something you know, in, in science. And I said, well, this is the opportunity. Go and do it. No, I didn't say it like that. Uh, uh, and he had the best time. He did it in semester two, and he ended up working through the summer. He learnt lots of things, and you know, uh, and he still com he communicated with me afterwards, and I'm still in touch with Jack. And yeah, it was a wonderful experience. So you'd be surprised. Um, you know, you you don't know what you don't know. Yep. And a lot of the experience. I, I haven't had any student. Uh, some have thought that it wasn't going to be a great experience. Uh, but all the students have had a, had a wonderful experience with the uh, workplace uh, that they've ended up in. We did actually in, invite a couple of students to come and speak. I, I've actually overlooked that. Shona's not in the audience, is she, by any chance? I actually haven't met her face to face. I'm just wondering if our venue change might have mucked that up, so I'm very sorry about that. But I can only reiterate what Stephen said, you know, some of the experiences our students have are quite exceptional. Um, Oz Minerals, one of our mineral geosciences students, uh, has recently done one with Oz Minerals and has been invited back to do a paid internship. Now, we won't support that in the same organisation for credit. He's got this wonderful opportunity to get a paid opportunity there and, you know, I'd be very surprised if that doesn't lead to perhaps future work opportunities. So great opportunities through this program uh, if you can fit it in and if you're interested. Excellent. Okay, so were there any other <coughs> final questions? <coughs> no, excellent. So once again, thank you for coming along. Like Ross said, congratulations for identifying this as something that you can add to your usual curriculum and, and the courses that you're doing within your program. So, you know, I really believe and am passionate about employability being an essential part of our graduates in 2020 and beyond. So well done coming along and keep your eye on Career Hub um, and if something catches your eye and you're not too sure about it, you can contact Ross. If there are other questions after this, you can contact me directly. Remember my name is Stephen Kidd, microbiology, microbiology. Anyway. Okay, thank you very much. Okay, that was good. No, I think, I think that was excellent, actually. I'm so glad you came.